Welcome to July Set News. My name is Rob, and today what I want to talk to you about is how President Joe Biden is looking to raise taxes exponentially, pretty much doubling it. So we're going to take a look at how uh, USA is probably going to get some uh, pretty massive tax hikes. We're going to take a look at 100 million to 1 million. And we're going to take a look at how I don't pay any capital gains tax, and I'm not talking about Puerto Rico. And lastly, we'll take a look at some positive things about how for the politicians and what's going to happen in the midterm elections and what that's going to lead to as far as the crypto and uh, traditional markets itself. So first things first, I just want to get this out the way. Um, USA is probably going to get a, a big hit as far as taxes. There was a, a quick interview. This is on Squawk Box. Let me just play this for you. And this is what's going on with the Biden's tax proposal. Taxing the wealthy uh, would make the capital gains tax the highest in the world. Robert Frank joins us uh, now with more. He's a, you're like a tax aficionado, basically. I am the tax man, Joe. <laughs> President Biden has, of course, proposed, uh, proposed raising the top capital gains rate to the same level as ordinary income. Now, combined with state taxes, that plan would give the U.S. the highest capital gains tax rate in the world. The president's plan calls for hiking the rate from 23.8 percent to 43.4 percent for any income over $1 million. Now, most states also tax capital gains at ordinary income rates. So, according to the Tax Foundation, state taxes would add an average of five percentage points to the federal, bringing the total combined rate to 48.4%. That would be far and away the highest rate in the world. That would pass Denmark with 42%, Chile with 40%, and France with 34%. The U.S. would also rank highest in the world for dividend taxes. Now, since dividends come from after-tax corporate profits, the combined corporate and dividend tax rate would be over 65%. That beats number two ranked Ireland and South Korea. Now, the tax foundation saying higher rates on individual shareholders reduce the return to savings and higher taxes on corporations raise the cost of investment, reducing savings and investment. Now, Joe, you look at states like California, New York, New Jersey, they would all have combined capital gains rates of over 54 percent, not to mention many countries like Singapore and New Zealand that are moving toward zero capital gains taxes. So this would be a competitive disadvantage for U.S. investors if it happens. Yeah, so there you go. So remember that even though we're talking about this, it doesn't mean that it is guaranteed to happen. That's the whole art of negotiation. They start very high and then they meet in the middle. But I do believe that uh, there's going to be some uh, massive tax hikes coming forward. And I always knew this would happen. I never thought that... Uh, uh, crypto would go to zero and the government wants to, to get rid of it because they want to tax it and get that money back. And that's really what it comes down to. And then also, I remember this being a little bit differently. When this bill first came out, there must be some revisions. It was supposed to be $100 million uh, people who, who made that much to be taxed in this way. And now it's been dropped you know, 50 million now to only $1 million. And this is actually from the taxfoundation.org, link in the description, you can verify this. It says the Organization for Economic Cooperation Development, or OECD, uh, this will be the proposal to uh, tax long-term capital gains, ordinary income for taxpayers with taxable income above 1 million and raise the top to 39.6. So just like we had heard in the interview, that is true. I thought it was a mispronunciation, but uh, absolutely not. And then also just remember that even though you're paying federal taxes on your capital gains, long-term or short-term, don't forget if you live in these states, you're also going to get dinged for a lot more. So California is at a whopping 13.3%. New Jersey, 10%. Washington, D.C., 10.7%. Ah, now we know why Michael Soto didn't want to pay tax in Washington, D.C. Oregon, 9.9, .9 and so on and so forth. So you're looking at a, a pretty hefty price tag uh, as they move those things up. And that would lead me to my last or second last point, which is how I'm not paying any capital gains tax and not because of Puerto Rico. Now, as you know, we live in Puerto Rico, but we vacation in Texas, and uh, there's no capital gains taxes over there. Now, things could change. There's been rumblings of things going on. And uh, those provisions could could uh, be wiped out. However, with Roth IRAs, uh, these have been around for for decades now. And this is exactly uh, what a lot of people have done uh, to save their wealth. And what I use is this thing that's spinning above my head right here. Open a crypto IRA. It's with iTrust. And iTrust Capital. Uh, there's a link in the description. Looks just like this. 
And in that, uh, that description, you can find a deep dive into iTrust and how it all works and how Peter Thiel, uh, the famous billionaire investor, actually used a Roth IRA to save billions of dollars uh, for his retirement. Now, with, and then of course, there's a link, and then you can use it to uh, sign up and get $100 just for opening up a Roth IRA account. So just to be sure this is for you, uh, just know that uh, on top of uh, putting your crypto into your, to a Roth IRA, you can also stake uh, your crypto. And right now they have it as uh, Polkadot. I just know that there are some fees associated with that. But imagine uh, the price appreciation for crypto that you have in your Roth IRA. You can also stake your Polkadot. And that's what they have right now. They don't have anything else right now yet. But if you could stake other things, that would also be uh, tax exempt. You can protect your assets with uh, so simple storage, 6 billion transactions, 175,000 cre accounts created. I am one of those. I've had one, mine for almost two years now. You can buy and sell all the different types of crypto. And of course, this is the big one, institutional grade crypto custody. They use Coinbase custody and Fireblocks. And Coinbase, I believe, is the one for Michael Saylor and Michael Strategy. Uh, they have 320 million insurance policy, 42 million insurance policy with Fireblocks. So uh, I hope you don't have more, more than that. And then here's all the different cryptos that you can use. Uh, you can please look at those. Uh, Axie, Decentraline, Bitcoin, Chainlink, Polkadot. Uh, you've got Polygon, Tezos, Avalanche, ooh, Aave, Algorand, Bitcoin Cash, Chainlink, Compound, Cosmos, Curved Out. I mean, you, if you think about it, you've got a lot. And also they have physical gold and silver as well. So uh, there's a lot of different options for you. And then... Uh, Lastly, there's a video, like I said, in the description, which will describe to you the difference between a, a Roth, a traditional, and a Seth. And there's also uh, different questions that come about. The one thing that I always think about is this, well, how much is this going to cost? And also, is this going to be a rug pull like some other different projects? Well, they don't deal with, with lending and earning and all that stuff. All they do, this is their pricing model. It used to be $29 a month. Now there's no more monthly fees. However, for all the transactions that you do, you're going to pay 1%. And think about it this way. I know many of people who have taken their, they have sold their Bitcoin within their Roth IRA account, transferred it into cash as that cash sits in the Roth IRA. They let Bitcoin go from 60,000 down to 29 or 20,000. Today is October 1st. And they buy it right back at 3X. So they just saved a ton of money. There is no capital gains and they can buy their crypto right back within the Roth IRA account. Now I've done that before. I paid the 1% and I'm happy to do so. Also, there's a, I also own gold and silver in my Roth, or, uh, Roth IRA. So that's $50 over spot and 250 over spot for silver. And some basic questions that I always get is this, is can I place a limit order or a stop loss? Yes, you can. You can put a limit order or a stop loss, which is pretty good for you traders as things go down or a little bit too high. You can sell those put in a cash and wait for a better opportunity. Also, what's the minimum account or maximum per account to start? To start, it's $1,000. The maximum fund and account is based on IRS limitations and cash contributions. Me personally, I can only give $7,000 per year to my account. So I got to make that count. And that's why I'm trying to do this before the end of the year. So that would take care of the whole part of how I'm paying no capital gains. Remember, this is a Roth IRA, so I must wait until 59 and a half years old. Uh, if I do, if I take it out before then, there is a big penalty. Again, watch the video, link in the description. And this would lead me to my last point. This whole video was, was started all because of Joe Biden. And the thing that I keep worrying about is, you know, what's going to happen with the midterms which are coming up? We got about a month to go. And um, I am not a very big political person. I like to follow it. I just don't really have much skin in the game because I think all politicians are a bunch of liars and that's just how it is. However, there is a something I consider myself with is how this is going to affect the market. This is how it is. There's a, uh, a great graph. It takes a look at the midterm election year stock market performance since 62. And since we know that crypto is a little bit correlated with uh, NASDAQ, S&P 500, and Dow, it's interesting to see how things would uh, would pan out now. And, and, and this, this chart goes from 1962 all the way to 2018. And you can just see that the before midterm price, or 12 months before, in 1962 was negative, almost negative 18%, 1962. And then uh, three months after the midterms, it was up 17%. Then a positive 23, then 30, going six and 12 months out. 
Same thing in 96, negative 13, 8, 17, and 17. Richard Nixon, negative 14, to positive 15, 24, and 13. And actually, it's mostly positive once we get out of the midterms into three, six, and 12 months out. So I think that's positive. And you can just see right here that here's the midterm average. Zero point are pretty much flat uh, before the midterms. Three months after the midterms, you're looking at a positive 7.3 on average. 15% in six and 16% in 12. So I think there's a lot of better things on the horizon. The thing is, I just want to make sure that you're aware of different ways to save yourself from the tax man. And that's it. So look, that's it for today. Hope you liked the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. So let uh, YouTube notify you. But that's it for this session. I want to thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.